This tutorial is sponsored by Patreon. Thank you all for your support. Welcome back guys. Uh, this is our third episode. In this episode we're gonna be setting up our character moment. So as for now our project looks like this. We cannot do anything, we cannot move and that's not good. So let's create our character moment system. First thing, first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new folder, call it inputs and inside of this folder we're gonna create input action. This one is gonna be called EA move, like input action move and we're gonna go inside, make value type be axis 2D and I will tell you later why and also I can hold control D to duplicate and call it EA look as well. Then I can uh, go ahead and control D again, call it EA jump, but this time this EA jump is going to be boolean. Also I will be showing why. So now when we created all of this we're gonna get our EA input and get our input mapping context and call it IMC default. Like that. If we open it up we can press this little plus and for our jump we will set it to be space in my example. We can press plus again and this one is going to be EA look with uh, its key value being mouse xy to the axis. And also we're gonna add modifier to it called negate and this modifier is basically going to use, uh, use us because by default if we just go with this EA look, look if we go with mouse up it's going to be inverted you know if you go with mouse up it's going to aim down and we don't want this so un un uh, check x and check z and leave it for the y and now the mouse is going to be normal so with that being done we can close that and we can go to our ea move if we press plus now we will have we need four so we have four now. First one is going to be W, then A, then S, then D. So WSD for moment. First modifier is going to be Swizzle input axis values. The second modifier in the A is going to be negate. And for the S, we, wa we want to get two modifiers, one being Swizzle input and the other being negate just like that and they can live like this without anything and that's gonna work perfect we can save but now we cannot do anything with this because it's not set up in our player character so how do we set up that we go to our core we locate our, our player character we open full blueprint editor we can delete those two and from event begin play, first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cast to player controller. And we will do it like this. But I want to make this series very modular and very clean. So instead of casting like that, we're gonna be using blueprint libraries. So create new folder, call it blueprints, and get new folder inside of it and call it macro library. Now we're gonna go to the right click blueprint, blueprint macro, macro library, oh sorry, blueprint, blueprint uh, yeah macro library and we're gonna select character. So what does this blueprint macro library do? Well in case if we had more characters, for example uh, character girl character and boy character, we would be able to cast without writing all this code. We would be able to write it only once and then use it in every character. So this one is going to be casting. Character casting. 
and if you want you can call it BML like a blueprint micro macro library. So if we open the macro library right now we can see we have macros here and here is going to be cast to apple player uh, controller gameplay gameplay player controller so like you would cast in uh, usual way you will just cast to apple gameplay player controller this input is going to go into inputs at uh, this execution and uh, this uh, return execution is going to be into outputs. Our object is going to be get player controller, just like that. If the cast fails, we're going to delay it until the next tick. So it's going to try it until it's available, because we will be needing this player controller every time in our game, since every UI is going to be done in this player controller. So this is very nice and you're not going to get any errors with this code. So this as uh, Apple gameplay player controller goes into output and this can be called Apple gameplay player controller I'm putting some underscores here underscore reference just like that. And you will see what we did here, but you can only use this one in character. So you cannot go into actor, like blueprint actor and use it there, because this is strictly blueprint macro library for our character. So what we are gonna do here is cast to player character, oh sorry, cast to apple, cast to apple gameplay player character and we're gonna get this node. And now just promotes to variable here. You have it all set up with the name and as a gameplay player controller we want to reach to our enhanced input local player subsystem like this and we simply want to add mapping context just like that but we only uh, oh yeah so we would usually have is valid here. So if you didn't do it uh, like I did, and you just cast it to the player controller here, then you need to check if it's valid. But we are already checking if this one is valid, right? So no need to do that. Perfect. So this is how your code should look like right now. You can pause the video. And now mapping context goes IMC default, just like that. Okay, so that is done. Let's uh, get our EA jump now. This one is pretty easy. When we start, we can uh, start jumping. Oh, sorry. Jump. From start, it goes jump. And on completed, we can just stop jumping. Just like that. We can comment it and call it jump. Also, I like to play with the colors, so I'm gonna set it to black color because it looks very nice like this. Now, let's get our EA move. This one, this one is going to be a little bit more uh, complex. So, from the tr triggered, I'm gonna add movement input and if you remember, we did set our um, EA move to be axis 2D, and because of that now, if I split struct pin here, I will have X and Y because of the axis 2D. So what do I do with that? Well, first we're gonna get control rotation. We're gonna split struct pin here, and we're gonna get our right vector get right vector. Also split struct pin. And we're gonna connect X and Z. So here we just connected to the world dire direction 
you don't really need to understand uh, how this works. This is just basic uh, Unreal Engine character movement setup. And this goes, uh, sorry, the scale value goes inside of the X value. So this is our uh, left and right. Then we need to go forward, right? So we're gonna add movement input once again. Just like that. And we are also gonna get control rotation. So we can just select this and copy it. But this time, instead of the right vector, we're getting forward vector. We're gonna connect X and Z here and return value into the world direction. And the scale value is going to be our Y here. So this is how it should look at the end. Let's call it character movement. So now let's get our EA look so we can move our camera. So from the triggered, we're gonna add pitch input. So add controller pitch input and also add controller Joe input. Also, because we set the EA look to be just like the EA move, axis to D, now we can split the section values here and we can connect pitch to X, oh sorry, Joe to X and pitch to Y. And to make this cleaner, we can just make Joe first and then pitch. Great. Call this camera movement. <coughs> so we have that set up. But we didn't do anything in our viewport, so we're gonna get our camera. Just press uh, first, we're gonna get spring arm, which is basically um, our handle for camera. Plus, uh, it's for collision purposes, so we don't go through the wall with camera. But in our case, it's going to be zero for now, and we can bring it up like this. And now we can add some camera. Um, we're gonna set this to zero back again. Uh, sorry. Set this to zero first. That was my mistake. And then add camera to it. And now this spearing arm can go up with camera, right? Okay, so make sure your camera doesn't have pawn control rotation. That's very important. But your spring arm should have pawn control rotation ticked. Also in your player character, just disable use controller rotation job. So it's in your upper player character self. If we compile and save now, and press play. As you can see, I'm able to run and walk and look around. Okay, so this is perfectly working right now, but I want to do something else as well. I will go into my gameplay player controller and once I start, I will create a function enable game 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 input and this is going to be uh, set show mouse cursor to be off and set input game only the player controller is going to be self because we are right now inside of the player controller and if we compile it now it's uh, still same but uh, later when we have some UIs and the main menu, it's going to work as it's intended. So it's very good to have it. Oh, sorry. Um, we didn't put it on the begin play. That's my mistake. So this needs to be uh, in the begin play of the player controller. And now we don't have this, this mouse cursor happening. 
when we open the game. Uh, so our game is instantly set to the game input. So if I disconnect this, you will see I will have still mouse, as you can see here. I have mouse. But if I connect this back, no mouse. And I am instantly in the game. I don't have to click twice to get inside. So yeah, this is our uh, game for now. We did our character movement from the scratch. I'm pretty happy with it. And in the next episode, we're gonna explore some uh, more things about survival horror. So thank you guys for watching and see you in the next episode.